Your list starts now. Just because your dog has not been seen does not mean it's not out there. Two things pet owners typically do when their dog runs off that you probably shouldn't. Plus, carry on friendly essentials packed with surprises that will leave you soaring with delight. You wake up looking nice and refreshed. But first, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So pick those people carefully. Ways to find the right mentor that will help change your life. That's on the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Shaguna Dualowu, and next month is National Mentor Month. Behind almost every successful person, there's a mentor who gave them guidance. If you want to succeed in this competitive world, it might be time to look for help. How to find the right mentor and make them work for you is our featured story on the top of the list. There's no better time than the beginning of a new year to reevaluate your career goals with the help of a mentor. A mentor is anyone who's done something as a couple steps ahead of you. Expert super connectors Jen Gottlieb and Chris Winfield give us tips on how to make a connection with a mentor. For starters, decide what type of mentor you need. You want to visualize what you want your outcome to be, what type of person you want to be on the other side. A great place to start is to write down in a journal what you want that future to look like. Career, relationships, money, health. Then you can start saying, okay, what are some of the people that already have those things, that have already done those things, and find those people, and because those are the people that are going to lead you to that ultimate vision. If you want to be a doctor that specializes in brain surgery, then you can say, all right, I need a mentor that's a brain surgeon that is specializes in what I want to specialize in and that has the qualities that I want to have. Next. Who do you spend the most time with? You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You mirror other people's energies. They say the goal is to surround yourself with people that will hold you accountable to the type of person you want to be. The people that you surround yourself with can all be your mentors. So pick and choose the people you surround yourself with really, really, really carefully because that's who you're going to end up becoming. Finally, connect with your mentor. So we'll make a list of the top 20 people that we know that could possibly connect us to that person. Use your personal contacts to introduce yourself to others you want to network with. Also, use social media as another resource. Now with Instagram and Facebook, people are you know coming out with content every single day. And if you really resonate with somebody, I have a couple mentors that I follow on social media. This allows you to reach out directly and pitch your need for their help. Search websites like Envelop, Score, and Mentor City that can connect you with mentors or... You can start with books or you can start with TED Talks. Learning about somebody's life or their greatest teachings through a book, through an audiobook, whatever it is, is one of the best ways to find a mentor and it's also one of the most cost-effective ways. Going further and faster with a mentor is at the top of the list. Mentors take us by the hand, but it's our best friends who tug on our heartstrings. Look, many of us have had a dog go missing, and it's agonizing. The first instinct is to panic. But our Christina Guerrero asked a real-life pet detective for tips on finding Fido. We hope our pups never go missing, but in the event they do... It's really important to be prepared. To learn how, we turn to pet recovery specialist Babs Fry. First up, to find Fido, stay put. Let your dog find you. Don't go trying to find your dog. If your instinct is to drive around and search, try and refrain, cause... You spread smell. Your scent is now all over the place. They absolutely know the sound and smell of cars. You take them to dangerous places inadvertently by your frantic attempt to find them. You can confuse them. Yeah, we do do it for 12 days, babe. So if they left from home, Bab says to stay there. Get those doors and windows open and... Utilize scent by putting dirty laundry out. Yep, she says they know your scent. So put an article of clothing at the open door and one in a bush or tree in the front yard to help your pooch find you. They think with their notes. Her next tip is easier said than done. Stay calm. It is imperative that you be aware of the energy that you're putting off. Dogs are very, very, very sensitive to our nonverbals. So if you see your pup and abruptly scream out to them, the dog will bolt and run even from their owner because all they heard was your instantaneous panic. 
And they're like, oh my God, if they're afraid, I better be afraid. And then they leave. So Bab says, take a moment to breathe and let the dogs come to you with the help of some treats. I personally advocate for rotisserie chicken or bacon. Finally, get your PR hat on and spread the word. Posters, posters, posters. And social media, Facebook, Craigslist, next door. And she says keeping your posters super simple is key. Less is more. She says all you need to include is a picture, your phone number, and say, Don't chase the dog. Make an immediate phone call. Nothing more, nothing less. Bab says it's also crucial to call shelters to see if anyone turned in your pup. And most importantly, through the process, never give up. Just because your dog has not been seen does not mean it's not out there. Are you happy to be home? Thanks, Babs. Now we can have confidence to know the steps to take if Fido decides to flee. Well, hopefully Fido is safely at home admiring your Christmas tree and all the things underneath it. The rap game is our first story trending now. All right, come on. <laughs> to Anna, Jake wanted you to have this with love, Mrs. Claus. Tis the season for presents, but there's good news for folks who wrestle with wrapping. University of Nevada researchers found perfectly manicured presents inflate gift expectations compared to one sloppily scotch taped together. Let's get the one with the candy cane. Well, you know, the wrapping paper doesn't make the holidays. It's what's inside that counts. Very true. Researchers say loved ones are more likely to focus on the gift inside when you hand them a clumsily wrapped present. And those pristine packages can actually lead to a bigger letdown if the gift doesn't meet expectations. Oh, okay. Uh... I don't have this. One thing most people do have this time of year, a sweet tooth. States of Christmas cookies, that's at number two. Merry Christmas, <gasps> Cookie Monster! Cookies! Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Cookie Monster isn't the only one wolfing down holiday treats. After analyzing recipe searches, General Mills found those Hershey Kiss topped peanut butter blossoms are the most popular holiday cookies in seven states, including California, Nevada, and Florida. And only one state chose a treat that is synonymous with Christmas. Gingerbread cookies captivated the taste buds of Hawaiians. Nothing says Christmas more than gingerbread cookies. Our final trending topic takes us from cookie dough to I do. Bachelor Nation nuptials are at number three. Alex, this is your last rose tonight. It's the final rose tonight. This is the final rose tonight. Final rose tonight, when you're ready. Bachelors and bachelorettes have come and gone, but Chris Harrison is a rose ceremony staple. The host has been guiding love seekers since 2002, and now he can help you tie the knot. Harrison recently launched a website that gives fans the opportunity to book him as their wedding officiant. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I think you know what to do. <laughs> His website warns there are limited dates available, but get this, he's willing to travel, so destination weddings are not out. Make an inquiry at chrisharrisonofficial.com. The cost of having Chris at your wedding isn't listed, so who knows how much his presence will bump up that wedding bill. But for some people, it'll be priceless. And that's what's trending now. Next on the list, Santa, a newspaper, and a free library. Pretty normal, but the three on this list are adding extra smiles for the holidays. All next on the list. Welcome back. Now, if you're hopping on a plane or hitting the road for the holidays, the last thing you want when you arrive is to look and feel jet lagged and road weary. So our Heidi Fogel song has the carry on essentials that'll have you arriving refreshed. Traveling during the holidays can be exhausting on the body. So here are three products to throw in your carry on that will keep you healthy and energized from beginning to end. First on our list, caffeine that's good for you. Goodbye to my favorite latte. Okay, lots of sugar. Go in vitamin infused coffee. The vitamins in this blend are all essential vitamins and are involved in brain health, energy, metabolism, immune system, and so much more. 
Ingredients include ancient spices that help reduce inflammation, as well as MCT oil, which is infused to help with brain function and endurance. Better energy for the road trip. I'm in. Next item on our Carry On Essentials list, the face mask. Seven of them. This mask system is to be used consecutively for one week to help you achieve all your skincare goals for hydrated, glowing, more youthful looking skin. Yeah, this feels nice and soothing. Why not every day of the week? And the best part is you can use these separately too. You don't have to use them all in one week. <sighs> Last, try to get some sleep with the sleeping mask. It's really great for travel. So whether you're on a plane or a train, you don't have a lot of control on the light around you. So again, put on a sleep mask, cut out that light, sleep right through it. <sighs> So what are the benefits of this charcoal infused mask I'm trying out? Some help with cooling, cut down on puffiness around the eyes, you wake up looking nice and refreshed. Love that, especially after one of those long red eye flights. This holiday season, keep calm and carry on with these three travel essentials. Thanks, Heidi. And while some of us are wearing sleep masks, others are wearing superhero capes. Teresa Strasser has three ways people are spreading kindness during the holidays, and it's on the buzz list. Teresa. Thanks. Here are a few ways people are spreading Christmas cheer with kindness. First, Little Free Library is a book sharing movement with over 90,000 boxes worldwide. But Grandma Roxanne's library in West Seneca, New York, includes a holiday mailbox with a direct line right to St. Nick. They go right to Santa and Santa will answer them for the kids personally, handwritten. It is stocked with free books and gifts like pencils, candy canes, and small toys. Needless to say, it's a neighborhood holiday hit on their block. Read a lot of happiness. The little kids all smiling and kids were talking to each other from different cars and it was very enjoyable. Books and a letter from Santa, all festive and free, cannot beat that. Next, the Northeast Ohio Coalition for the Homeless is raising money to help the people they serve by selling a special holiday edition of their paper, the Cleveland Street Chronicle. The paper gives info and true stories about people who've had the unfortunate experience of being homeless. The sheets of their first annual holiday wrapping paper edition is actually wrapping paper that comes with an added bonus. They can unwrap the present, and instead of throwing the wrapping paper away, they can read the article on the back. It's going for a uh, buck 25 and can be found at various stores around Cleveland, Ohio. Sometimes the wrapping is the best part of the gift. And third on our spreading kindness for Christmas list is out of Denver, Colorado, where Santa is allowing deaf children to ask for Christmas gifts via sign language. The Signing Santa program has been part of the Cherry Creek Shopping Center for more than 25 years. What do you want for Christmas? Uh, have you been good all year? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think so. Getting to see Santa and know that he can sign with them too and that's another way that they communicate. Just the joy that they have is awesome. Okay, he can ride a sleigh, slide down a chimney, and he knows sign language Santa is definitely making a nice list this year. Spreading Christmas joy with more than just a toy on the buzz list. Wow, after all these years, Santa Claus keeps surprising us. Hey, more of the list is still to come, so stay with us. Now from the list, take coffee from your mug to your grub with this tasty coffee rub steak. First, mix equal parts of pepper, Himalayan sea salt, and ground coffee in a bowl. Light roast, medium roast, what do you I'm recommend? Just whatever you prefer, I go Kona. Then, oil your steak and apply the coffee rub all over. Finally, cook the steak to your desired temperature and voila! That coffee gives it a special flavor. For everything that's new now and next, go to thelisttv.com. We are back, folks, and more and more Americans consider themselves foodies, adventurous eaters. If you're one of them, it's time to push your taste buds into uncharted territory. So loosen your belt, because Christina Guerrero is digging into the food of Puerto Rico. There's nothing common about the cuisine from this commonwealth. Wesley Andujar, owner of Puerto Rican Latin Bar and Grill, gives us island flavors you'll want to savor. Starting with popular fried appetizers. This is a tostone, which is a green plantain, deep fried, taken out, smashed, refried again. And a lot of people eat it with what we call mayo ketchup, which is ketchup, garlic, and mayonnaise. The starchy starter is crunchy, not too greasy, and chock full of garlic. Mm. 
Oh, it's so good. While its riper relative, Maduros, is softer and sweeter. Now I'm using my fingers. Can this be finger food? It's okay, you can use it. <laughs> A finger looking treat that's greasy and sweet. Oh. Yeah, you like that, huh? That is so good. It's like dessert. Another popular appetizer, alcapuria, combines mashed plantains and a starchy root known as yuca or cassava and is filled with beef. It's a Puerto Rican egg roll. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we move to entrees, starting with the supremely popular pernil. Which is pulled pork with the Puerto Rican yellow rice arroz con gandule. Love the rice and pork, but what's gandule? Pigeon peas. These are peas. Peas, yeah. See, the right. Mexicana on me, I was like, where's the beans? No, these are peas. <laughs> Another dish, chicken and onions with mofongo, which is mashed plantains with garlic and adobo. Puerto Rican mashed potato, I call it here. It's something similar. That beats my mashed potatoes any day of the any week. Day. <laughs> that is so amazing. And Pacific cod and garlic sauce served with yuca and onions. The garlic and the onions kind of pull it all together. Yep. Mm -hmm. But my favorite, pasteles, root veggies mashed and stuffed with pork and olives, then wrapped in a plantain leaf and boiled. People don't eat the plantain leaf. That's not the part you eat. Kind of the Puerto Rican version of a Mexican tamale, and it's a holiday favorite. Mm. In Christmas time, favorite things that everybody in the family makes mm. is pasteles. Everybody makes this. And finally, dessert. Today we're trying a traditional pudding made of canned coconut milk called tembleque. I really like that one. That wow. is good. Yep, it's light. Sweet cinnamon flavor was so good, it was hard to shake off. Another great Puerto Rican. Who's that? Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that shake. Transporting our taste buds to the Caribbean Puerto Rican style. That looks amazing, Christina. I am jealous, as if the holidays didn't already have me thinking about food 24-7.